Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 214, halfway through June. Pretty nice. It's cloudy here. So I guess that's the way it is in Seattle area. As Seattle. always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. If you are with us right here, right now, go ahead and say hi. I'd love to see you. Um, I know Jacob jumped on. So if you're here, say hi. Um, what are we doing today? We're going to triage the new issues. We'll get that done. And then we're going to jump into a design discussion. Um, Sean wanted one of them promoted, so we're going to talk about that and make some progress. And then we're going to go back and triage uh, old V4 issues and generally get a feel for how things are rolling. And from there, I think we'll make a plan of how we're going to continue to fix them. Um, and then, we'll, as always, we'll do the questions and comments. So we're going to triage. Uh, discussion and then more triage. So, Bob, you ready? Uh, yeah. Let's go do new issue triage, or at least issues that people want to talk about right now. Because the first one is not an old, a new issue. It's actually a very old issue. And Bob, I saw you sent this back to triage, which is fine. I did. Um, Thank you. What's the question? Uh, well, so going back, the original issue is. Uh, I guess a feature request that you should be able to use a preprocessor variable in an if preprocessor block. And I guess I have that value interpreted as a Boolean or I guess coerced as a Boolean. Um, hmm. And we took it. And because it's a, a I don't know, technically, it's technically a breaking change, not particularly problematic breaking change, but it is technically breaking. So it was moved into V4.0 right about six years ago. Um, but I'm not sure if we should be doing this, um, given that, uh, you know, we already have if def and if and def. I worry about you know expanding the preprocessor to handle coercion like this. I, I can't I can't think of an example elsewhere where we, where we do that kind of coercion. Um, so right now, if is the same as if def then for var a. Well. Because if RA is not defined, is it false? No, it even evaluates a true. Oh, if you use a pre I don't know the subtlety there. Well, it's it's. I, I actually I don't. I suspect that if it's not defined, it's false. But it's not simply if def, right? It's it is you know is a zero. Well, that's false. Unless it's not zero, in which case it's true. Um, and and the original issue goes on, you know, like false, no, true, yes, maybe. I don't know what maybe would turn in. No. Um, but it's that again, it's it's coercing uh, some traditional values for you know truth and falsity that that uh, again, I'm not aware of any other place we do that in Wix or even just in the preprocessor. Uh, so I was kind of, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. The uh, The other problem, of course, is that, um, you know, it, because there are preprocessor variables, uh, we couldn't do any conversion on this, right? So it would just be, you know, Wix convert couldn't, could not fix this. Mm. Again, uh, you know, you have to kind of consider the value of the current behavior. We could whether we could go it's, the C sharp. Likely it's in use. We could go in the C sharp route. Well, that's I think what they're looking for here. No, because C sharp won't evaluate a variable. Well, I guess if, if it's a bull, they have a type system, right? But I, I, I guess treating all defines as strings, which is basically what we do. Um, you, we 
could say that this is invalid syntax in v4. Rather than say that's true, no matter what the string value is, we could say that's invalid syntax in v4. And if you want if def, then use if def or if and def, right? Um, but if you want to say if, uh, basically don't do coercion and say, uh, no, you have to tell us what an if statement is. Okay. Uh, to be clear, I'm perfectly fine with that because we do have if def, right? And that's, yes. I think, very clear. Yeah. Um, I think this is unclear, and I think that's probably the thing we should fix. Yeah, I think that'd be fine. Just say that's an error now. Mm -hmm. It's unlikely to give you what you wanted, and if def is much clearer. Use if def if you're trying to use this before. That's essentially what it would be. Okay. Uh, I mean, <laughs> to be clear, I'm perfectly fine with that uh, because I agree um, it's the equivalent of the uh, C sharp, uh, pound if, um, but it's not, it's absolutely not what the feature request is. Oh yeah. About. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. You're right. I, I am not going to satisfy, um, our Bradford's request here that you're absolutely correct. That's true. But we're ba basically saying that, um, defines are not Booleans. We just don't evaluate them as Booleans. And, um, as a result, like C sharp, you have to specify the expression that you want it to be evaluated to. You know, C sharp will not evaluate an int to true if it's non-zero. Well, in C sharp, the the I keep wanting to say the you know, preprocessor. Um, uh, you know, pound if only pound if is oh. equivalent to, to if def, I believe. Do they yeah. even support expressions? No, uh, limited. I think you can do and, or I think I haven't tried honestly. Um, oh yeah, you can, you can. Um, so anyway, I'm I, sorry, not like the C sharp preprocessor, like the C sharp if statement. We're just going to go there. Yeah, I guess yeah. Is what I'm saying. Sorry, you're right. That was not clear. Um, I think that's the way to go. And be like, yeah, we'll take this in four. It's a breaking change, and we can break it in four um, to make it more clear that this person could never get in a situation like this. Because it would have been a syntax error initially and been like, oh, okay, fine, I'll say if bar equals equals zero or not equals zero, I guess in his case. Cool. Works for me. All right. This feels old, but maybe it's not. Oh, this is Bob. This is it old. Is old. <laughs> I have no further comment. <laughs> Neither do I. All right. Um, all right. We'll just come back to it. I, I'm, we have other things to go burn down today. Um, cannot multi-arch Wix libs using Wix architecture specific Wix extension. Uh, I think this was discussed last meeting, and I took this issue, created this new issue, and I probably could have cleared triage because we already talked about it. Um, but yeah, this is assigned to me. Um, need to put it in the compiler and I need to think about how to um, how best to address this which may be bringing back the commands necessary to do what lit would let you do all right uh, so anyway, that's a known issue and I will fix it in four uh, switches that take arguments should report bad arguments not bad switches uh, yeah okay this is interesting you can give this to me I haven't done a lot of I haven't beat up the command line processing, so it doesn't surprise me if there are things that are non, not as ideal as they could be. So I will go improve the um, handling there. And is there a reason this is huge? <laughs> Did I Perhaps it's an important part of the bug report. I see. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Did we get rid of double spaces on all the other error messages already? Like was that a sweep that I'm? I, I it's yeah. I think at some point you made a you made a okay. sweep, and there was much rejoicing. And at least yes, I know, part. I know you are you are there. Um, three fourteen should drop XP support to Magic Wix four. 
um, it's probably true, and it'll also help us in the last time that we build 314 to not have to build one more platform out there. No, I guess we still have to build the platforms. We just won't build with XP. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking we just dropped the, the XP tool set. Right. I think that's the only thing we're doing to maintain XP support. All right. Uh, tag your it. Yeah. Okay. Um, bootstrapper after installing default instance, no further installation of instances are possible. Yeah. Burn doesn't support multi instancing right now. Right. I mean, it's a feature. It's kind of an interesting feature because you have to get all the different product codes in available for detection and then come up with how to detect arrays and report arrays and how you represent the many instances to a single bundle. And yeah, it's a fascinating feature. Um, do we already have a feature open on this? I went looking, I could not find one, which I found very odd. Yeah. I couldn't find one either. Wow, that's amazing. So it feels like somebody's asked for this. Maybe they've asked, but they never opened the feature, mailed an ask like on the mailing list and never opened the feature for it. Probably. Or we ended up with a title that is eluding all search sleuths. Yeah. Software. Instance, multi, something else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's either of those two things. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, this instance would have found this, but not multi. Anyway. All right. Um, yes, this is a known thing, and supporting multi instances is non trivial. And perhaps they'd like to go think about how that would happen and then understand how tra challenging it would be. All right, I think that's triage of the new issues. So are we gonna start handling huge issues like that differently? Or are we still gonna just throw in a bucket and wait for no one to pick it up? <laughs> um, well, I don't know that, yeah, this, this issue isn't a great thing to turn into a feature the way it's worded. Um, so there's probably I wonder if there's a value in creating a new issue that's the feature request yeah. for somebody. And yeah, putting I'll, I'll that. do that. Okay, it's a bit of bookkeeping, but whatever. Um, and then we just have to sit down and agree that we are doing the the suspended respawn thing um, and figure out what um, milestone we put those in. Or was respawn the milestone? Maybe that was it, the respawn was yeah. the milestone? Yep. We just have to say, yes, we're going to start doing that. We haven't committed to doing it. Okay. Well, I guess this goes into 4X, and then we're going to have that discussion when we go through all the 4X issues. Yeah. Or we, or the multi-instance becomes the first thing to create the respawn milestone. I mean, I think we agreed that's what we're doing, right? Uh, I thought so, yeah. Bob had a, like, he was going to go do a little more research a very long time ago um, to, I felt like, just the, the final, yes, this is the best way to, or this is the best way for us to do it. Um, I was mostly looking at the logistics of, of actually doing it. Um, right. And, of course, even back then and since then, especially, there are, you know, various GitHub bots that you can um, apply that right. do, the, do the same thing. Well, I think uh, so less about the bots and more about the, as we hit them, we can start throwing them in there, right? Well, uh, sure. I mean, it, yeah. do you start with our backlog or new stuff? Um, that said, though, I, I do I do want us to think about um, uh, respawn to me was always the we don't care or we're not opposed put it yeah, down we're not opposed yeah we're not opposed um whereas you know multi-instance support is actually something we think is a good thing it just needs design and and you know someone to at the very least shepherd some effort um and more likely you know apply some effort um mm -hmm. i'm wondering if if and maybe we're already getting into the the old issue triage. I'm wondering if we should have some way, and I don't know off the top of my head how to do this, uh, some way to indicate that this is a good thing and 
You know, this is a thing we we not just don't oppose. We actually, you know, throw some some mental cheerleading support to it. Um, if you were to pick caveat, one of these random issues that are in our backlog that we're not going to do anytime foreseeable, we would love it if you picked one of these. Yeah, yeah. This is a good thing. It's just not, you know, it's just not in our you know personal top tens or whatever. <laughs> Uh, it's, it was the same thing for me. It's like I don't care about multi-instance packages. I'm actually interested, I, and I'm not even interested in them. But it's a good feature. I can see that. Um, I'm interested in uh, the idea of, of you know per user slash per machine bundles. Um, yeah, we we don't have good support for that. Mm -hmm. We don't have any support for that. And and you know people have done some uh, interesting things I'll say um, in order to achieve it uh, but without quite a bit of effort it's it's not really doable um, I care about that but not enough to you know make it, for it to make my top 10 list that's the kind of thing where yeah I think we need some kind of label or I mean, it could be as simple as a label uh, maybe it needs something more um, to to say yeah this is this is something we, it's it's above meh, you know. <laughs> okay. It's, and maybe it's just a label. I mean, that would probably be sufficient. I mean, something like this would take a lot of work, both design work and actual implementation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And yeah. we have labels for like WIP required. Um, yeah, and, and and yeah. To be clear, I'm not expecting that this actually, you know, changes external behavior um but i it's, it's one of the i think it's due diligence we can do that especially you know when we're talking about new stuff or sorry new issues rather than re triaging old stuff where we have to you know where we're we're tending to go quickly uh, well one like, of the things was that everything in respawn was going to be closed right and it'd be the milestone that you could go pull things out of and be like, hmm, that's closed, but I'd like to make that come back. Right. I mean, the label would be something like hard, but desirable. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say please, but desirable, I like desirable. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we have to say if it's hard or not. Um, yeah, the, it, right. It could be actually a simple thing. Um, it although be generally it's it, not bumping it. If it's trivial, it's more than likely, you know, it might get done by one of us. But, but yeah, this this is a you know, multi instance, absolutely a hard thing. Uh, yeah. And absolutely, you know, extensive whip and design work and and all that, uh, which is, you know, obviously a reason it's not, it hasn't gotten done. Uh, so non trivial but desirable. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, label Again, I don't know if I want to label them. I don't want to scare someone away from. I, it's not even scare away from. I don't want to cost things. <laughs> really. I, I mean, we should put whip required on anything that we're like. Yeah. No, you, yeah. Gonna, that's a hint. Like. That's the. You need to, to think about the design extent. of this. Yeah. To to me, saying whip required is just. Yeah. It absolutely. Um. You know, bypasses the minimum bar of of yeah, this has to be designed and, and discussed. So more of a editor's pick label then. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I like liked that. desirable. <laughs> um <laughs> it's like this is we closed it. It's desirable, but we closed it because, you know, uh who's gonna come back for that? Um and all right, so we need to start doing that. Let's let's move on. We have other things yep. we have to get to today. Um, but yeah, we we need to decide when we do that sweep. I'm honestly I'm like <sighs> no end of things because um, I know what we have a whole lot of Wix four issues to talk about today too. So um, and and I know that we're just building up a backlog of random three X and four X junk um, that we're gonna have to work our way through to find the few diamonds that are in there. So yeah.
Um, okay. All right. I think that says we come back to here. With triage done. Let's see. Oh, wrong way. That one. There's the window I want to move. All right. Um, uh, today, uh, Sean wants to talk about the message API and stuff like that so that we can uh, move forward on that, or rather, I think Bob and I had questions about the API to burn messages and the interface, and our lack of understanding meant that we need to talk about it. Um, and in the future, then we have these things that we'll talk about that are less, I'd say, less pressing. Um, than this message API thing. <laughs> hashtag nightmare, hashtag what were you thinking? <laughs> no, we don't want to scare people away from Jacob. All right. Um, all right, so the burn message API and the interface API, The I'm going to try to sum up where I was thinking the message API was and the API, interface API. In burn, when Wix 3, we exposed it, via um, an interface you communicate to burn via an interface and that was fine you could you know hook up c plus plus code to it you could hook up your c sharp code to it talk to that interface you would implement the interface on your side to create your ba to get messages from burn or to get information from burn not just messages but information from burn and the interface was the way that the two communicated um, the downside to that was that we interfaces are challenging to change and we thought it would be nice if we didn't have those interfaces in there so that we could make um, changes to burn over time um, to adapt and to adjust things in a way that burn could change and the BA or whatever would have less impact um, because any change to the interface would break them and they'd have to go and fix their code. So. That was the idea between introducing this idea of messages, which then could be uh, versioned of sort so that additional data could be added. Um, can't remove data, of course, but additional data could be added to add functionality to burn so that BAs that were built against later messages could take advantage of that new functionality, and older BAs would not take advantage of that new functionality, and everybody would be happy. Um, that's the theory behind the feature. Um, right. So the and then in v4, I know I said somewhere that it would be great if we kept the interface API around at least in v4, so that people that were bringing their v3 BA could come to v4, deal with whatever breaking changes there were in the interfaces uh, to whatever extent that was, just so that they could get to v4, where then they could um, slowly appropriately wean themselves off of those interfaces to the message-based API so that in Wix v5 we could get rid of the interfaces and we have only the message API with the uh, expectation that the message API is going to be a fantastic success in v4. Um, we would have told everybody that the interfaces were deprecated so they need to move off of it, but hey, you're able at least to get to v4 in that first step, and v5, the message-based system, was going to be the only way. Um, and so the, where the um, question entered at the end was how to use BAs against the message API. And then I think Sean said somewhere that he was expecting people to use the interface API. And that was kind of like, a, oh, well, that's all right. That's surprising. So let's talk about what the plan is on how um, we expect BAs to migrate from uh, the deprecated interface system to the uh, message-based system, and we may have to have a different conversation for uh, native code versus managed code um, along those two steps, but it'd be great if managed code and native code were the same, knowing that the code has to be, there has to be some sort of interop layer built for managed code. So that's kind of where I was at, and Sean said, I think he said, all right, I, well, that's all I had, so I was like, with that background, Sean, how do we move the interfaces, or what do you view the interfaces and how they move to the messages going forward? I was pushing back against deprecating the interfaces. I don't understand that. 
So the message API is like uh, the lowest la layer, and that that lowest layer is giving us the flexibility to change things. But I expected people to continue to write their BA against the interface API. And then that gives them binary compatibility where they don't have to recompile their BA if they upgrade to the burn engine. But if they do want to upgrade to the latest BA API, then they can do that, but they might run into some breaking changes. But that's fine because that was their choice to upgrade. And then the whole point of that is that it's a lot easier. The code is going to be a lot cleaner if you're writing against the interface API than the message API. But interfaces still suffer from all the problems interfaces suffer from. Like, well, hard. yes and no, because you could write your BA against the 4.0 API, and then you'll be able to use that exact BA. You can keep on referencing that version of the BA API for the rest of V4, and it'll work. But it means we that Burn cannot change the interface API. Uh, so the interface API is part of Volutal. It's not part of Burn. So the user has the choice of when to upgrade the interface API. And they can choose never to upgrade the interface API. And that BA will still be binary compatible with any version of Burn in V4. OK. And then when they take a new ball util that uses a new functionality that breaks the interface, that's when they have to adopt it. So the messages enable the binary compatibility between the API, the, the consumed API, and the engine. And then the yeah. API is just broken whenever it needs to be broken, the assumption being that you'll stay with an older API until you choose to move forward. Right. So that's that's interesting. So if you, you so you'll take a Wix SDK. So in that case, your Wix SDK could mismatch, or you could have like a newer version of the Wix SDK, like Dimus Build, or you could be using a newer version of the Wix tools, but still referring an older version of the burn API, like ball util. Yeah, it's letting you compile your BA once and then use that. Because the and interface API is backed by the message API, and so it, keep, it keeps working. Yeah, but Unlike you're not going to compile the change you're not gonna compile, we would have made before. Right, but you're not going to compile the BA once. You might want to if you're going to have a build process, probably includes your BA in it. So if you take a new version of the Wix SDK, you may want to keep an old version of the Burn API. So you're, you don't, because so, the new version of the Wix, of the V4 Wix SDK and everything like that, with, you don't, you essentially you have to up, you have to, you can upgrade your Wix SDK independently of your Burn API consumption. And that's the important part. Right. I don't disagree, but man, we have some bad terminology here. Um, Burn API, like Sean said, it, the interfaces are in Volutal, but it's still a Burn API, obviously. But it's it's mildly, abs it's mildly abstracted. Um, Burn API, I think of the Burn API as the message-based API because that's what, uh, obviously, that's what Burn uses. Um, ball Util is a layer on top of it, and it's that layering that gives us the binary compatibility. Th that could just be a naming problem. We could, we... Oh, it's absolutely a naming problem. Okay. Yeah. Then, we, then we just have, we have to, we, we have to fix the naming problem if there's confusion there. Um, yeah. And probably, I, I probably shouldn't call the Ball Util like the Burn API. I should call, me, call that the the bundle application layer or you know, API 
and then the burn API could be the lower level message thing. Or I don't know. We just have to pick names for these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Binary compatibility is a huge win. I mean, that you know, this is the what we what we lacked, and really, this is mostly about the way that we're building. Uh, we're building Wix. You know, big ball of wax. Wix three. You could not separate that out. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's the fact that you get the interface API in a separate NuGet package that you can lock at a version that's different than the one that you build your bundles from. It's, I mean, it, it, it's also the implementation, right? Obviously messages give us that flexibility that, that, you know, we did not have in V3 uh, because burn spoke to the interface layer. So that's all good. So I think then in that I that that seems like that works. I'm I'm a, I'm adjusting my mental model um on the fly. Um but that should work then that means then we just have to define we have to name these things cuz here I am struggling with what to <laughs> what to say next cuz I don't have a name for it. Um but the thing that I the the bundle application uh, interfaces, but it's it see it's it's uh, as Sean reminded me earlier. Um, it's not just that. There's a few on Burn now. There's the extensions. They have theirs, and then um, there's the interfaces for writing a custom BA, for writing bundle extensions, and then Wix standard BA has its own level extensions with the BA functions. So there's just these three buckets of things that we have to cite. You can't, can can you write burn extensions in managed code? No. Okay. I didn't think so. Um, I'm not asking to do that either, by the way. I just want to make sure. <laughs> um, so I think we need to then, we just have to get these buckets defined properly and named well, I think that will probably clean it all up and then just be clear what's in the API part and where the messages are. And I think that'll clean up my understanding then of both sides. All right. And the goal then is to make that the part that's on the API generally as minimal as possible because that's the part that gets included with the custom BA or the custom um, bundle extension or the BA function. So the less that's in there, the more on the other side that's available in a backwards compatibility. I guess that's the other trick. It has to be available in a backwards compatibility, compatibility way. Yeah. Are the interfaces actual COM interfaces? Yeah, they're COM. Okay. Oh, the they don't need to be, except that probably makes it easier to do the managed layer. Yeah, it makes the interop with managed code a lot easier. Yeah. So I guess to the person's question, like we don't have, we're not versioning the interfaces. Like there's just one. And burn only communicates via messages. And then ball util has basically an interop layer that converts the messages into the com interfaces. So it that interop layer receives the message from burn, and then it calls the method on the com interface so that you can write a custom BA in V4 just like you did in V3. We just have to get that layer. Yeah, that's it. We just have to get those interfaces and ha the translation code all layered. So basically, when you, if a manage BA, it references Wix toolset .mba .core, so they get a native 
code DLL that has that interop layer. And then it has managed code that has all the interfaces and all the, just all the abstractions around those interfaces, just like it did in V3. Has there been changes to the interfaces in V4? I mean, we've added a lot of messages, oh. added parameters to existing. Okay. So we, yes, so we've added parameters and things like that. Okay. Oh, right, because there's all the caching change and everything, of course. Yeah, all yeah. the change in there. So I found it, it's that interop layer that I found interesting um, because, it, and it exists for both uh, managed code purposes and native code purposes. It's the it's the little wrappers that make dealing with the messages easier. Um, the adding the messages using the message based interface is cumbersome, right? Because every message has a struct that you know. It's it's not trivial to, um, well, it's trivial, but it's cumbersome because uh, you have to do this for every message. But there, that interop layer kind of simplifies that, um, which I find interesting as a, you know, if you wanted to take, if you wanted to build a BA using the messages, you'd want that that layering of code. Yeah, you're going to have to basically copy and paste all that code. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's there, so that's good. Um, maybe at some point we can expose it as its own thing. Because, again, this is the, you know, my original position is interfaces are bad. I've softened on that a bit, but it's still, you know, there's still some, some problems there. Um, that that using the messages, only the messages or directly the messages would be uh, would solve. Uh, so it's interesting to uh, make that uh, make working at that layer, you know, easier. Uh, because I think at a certain point you can get you'll get close to the simplicity of interfaces, which because they're com, really not that simple. Well. I don't really understand that because we're providing the a really super simple base class that implements the interface. So there's I don't right. understand I'm, I'm the problem with the interface because that's it's like super easy. Uh I the interfaces are fine, but because they're because we don't version them, they're they're still right now. Base classes are your are, are the the uh, compatibility layer, right? Without the base class, your your BA has to adapt to any interface changes. We still have the the brittleness problem. Um, the and in, the solution in V three was. Yeah, you. We guarantee source compatibility with uh, with uh, CBAL based bootstrapper application, and uh, two, you rebuild because you have to. Messages solve both of those problems at a cost of of the complexity, or again, not the complexity, the the trivial cumbersomeness of of having to deal with message packing. Again, it's not, you know, the, the solution of using CBALT based bootstrapper application and the, obviously the MBA core, yeah, it's going to be fine for almost everybody. So it, ju it just means that both APIs are essentially you know, required. We we can't deprecate the interface API because we would have no managed story. And even someone, you know, who likes the challenge of building a BA from all native code, most of them aren't gonna wanna 
deal with messages directly either. So, Sean, based on that, do you consider the messages then a private um, implementation detail? Uh, no, I don't see how that would work. <laughs> so, 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 oh, you're trying to say that we shouldn't al allow anyone to build message BAs? No, I, that was it was a question. I wasn't saying either way. I was it was literally a question. Do you view it as a public or a private implementation detail? I guess I don't see how we could try to make it private. Okay, so the messages then are part of the API, like the published API, just the same as the interfaces are. And a developer can choose to enter at the API or or enter at the message level if they wanted to. Right. Okay. But I don't, it would take a lot of work to write a message-based BA. And I don't, I don't so understand. Should we make it a private implementation detail? <laughs> Given that, should we make it a private implementation detail? I mean, I still don't understand how we would do that because we have to, we have to have header files for that so that the interop layer can um, do the interop. <laughs> well, we had a comment. Do not use. My my concern, well, how when when this discussion came up is, ooh, we have to maintain two APIs, and you know, ha, huh, we have to document them, right, right, for whatever level of documentation that we do today. Um, but it's it's also it's like, well, we have to make sure. Granted, message based APIs are going to be a lot more resilient to any kind of change we might make. But if they were private, then we'd have we'd have a lot more flexibility in how we would deal with that. So it wouldn't be, you know, any strong layering. It'd just be, you know, this is how burn works. You want these over here. Could, and the message could be hidden if we compiled a lib, right? Or is it that they end up in a C++ header file somewhere? Well, all the structs are going to have to be exposed, right? Hmm. If you have a C++ header file that just, ha if you just have an interface that has no implementation, the implementation can be in a lib, can't it? I'm trying to figure out what part I'm missing here. It doesn't Sorry, matter. Uh, uh, Great. Uh, uh, it, it's all open source, so. I mean, well, the... uh, no, 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 not that. The, okay. If we, in ball utils case, are the message headers still visible? Like they don't have to be right because the .h file has the interface definition, and then any implementation of the C++ code is in the lib, right? I'm I'm trying to get my head around the, yours, the code, the, the the shipping binary um, implications here. So the remember that all the burn headers they have all the structs, but they have all the enums as well. So you, you need the enums even in the com interface API. And the enums but, are shared between the messages and the interface? Yeah, I mean, the interface okay. uses all the enums from the message based API. Because they're, 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 sure. they're values, right? Sure, I, that I get. That I get. I mean, and do you either have to map them from one enum to the other that has to be in sync, or you just expose? The underlying enum. Let us let's public. not create MFC for burn. <laughs> well, I'm just I'm just I'm I want to make sure I'm 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 trying to find the line here of what has to be in and what is in, and then we can choose what's desirable. I'm just trying to expose the the whole spectrum of what's required, and then we can choose anything in between there of based off of what we choose is desirable. So burn has to expose all the all the enums yep. and some and all the some, uh, some values. No, burn. I'm sorry, yeah, not burn. The micro repo burn. 
the segment burn. Yeah. It has to expose all the enums, all the messages, and all the message structs. Yep. I all agree you and and and, all and three of just those. just just so we're clear, that burn section, technically speaking, is private. Like it's not visible to anybody. We don't well, generally talk about the outputs of that, right? Because burn's hidden away in the Wix tool set in a directory that we expect it to be in. And these headers are the first time being published out of it. So, so. No. No, because even in V3, right, you have, you have public burn headers in addition to all the, the, the headers yep. that are just used yep. for, the, you know, for the burn engine. And right? what I remember of the public headers that were published out of burn, there are all the interfaces. No. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Sorry, you are correct. All yes. right, good. Sorry, you said burn interfaces, and I immediately went to V4. No. Yes. yes. V3 published. But I V3 burn V3. engine and I burn Bootstrap application or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right, right. Yep. Yes. Um, so burn headers are public today in V3. In V3, yes. Yes. Oh, okay. You're V3. suggesting that in burn V4, they might not be? The messages, I'm just trying to find the line of the messages don't have to be. They could be a private implementation because the messages get um, are not exposed, the interfaces are exposed, and then enums also have to be exposed. So I, I get that, right? So it's not a clean, everything that out of the burn is not published. No, these enums are shared, are, are published straight out, right? But technically speaking, the messages do not have to be exposed to people. All those message structs could be an internal implementation detail of, of hidden of behind the interfaces. Of Ballutal. Of Ballutal. Right. So something has to communicate the burn. Something has to provide the burn message data to Ballutal. Correct. And saying, but that is not Ballutal can Ballutal can peek through the kimono. Well, Probably no. shouldn't. No, no, it owns it. it. It's it's the it's the ownership of making it public. That's an option that we have. I, I'm trying to decide, right? It's like, do we want the message structs to be public, right? And what I'm hearing is, well, they don't have to be. The enums have to be, or we have to duplicate them. And I agree, that's just dumb. Um, so the enums have to be. I got that. But it doesn't sound like the message structs have to be because they can be completely hidden behind the methods of an interface. Right, you, you, you're talking about how things ought to be. I'm saying right now, burn and ball util are not equivalent. Yeah. I so agree. maybe they, you know. Okay. Yeah. No. You're right. You're. And again, this is all. You know, it's. We can we can label it however we want. No, and, and really, I'm just trying to make sure I understand the bounds so that as I think about this, I, I don't like, I don't do something like, oh, hey, we can hide all the messages. Let's do that. And then we hide all the messages. And then look, all the enums are busted, right? Like, I want to have the mental model correctly so that I don't do something dumb like that, right? It's like, no, okay, clearly, the enums that are shared that are available to the messages structs are also published visibly because creating a mapping between those two things are silly. Okay, I got yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I got that. Yep. All right. What I'm trying to get to next is the structs technically don't have to be public if we don't want them. We can make them sure. internal burn sure. implementation detail. And we might do, for example, we might do that. I'm not saying we should, but we might do that because we want to sit on it, the messages, and see how they morph through v4 for a while. And if we don't make them public, that potentially gives us more degrees of freedom than we had if they're public. I don't know that that's true, but maybe it does, right? No, it's kind it, of a, I mean, it clearly, clearly there is that potential. Um, and to be clear, all I'm saying is right now, you know, there's no mechanism for sharing. Um, there, there's no mechanism for, for the concept of, of, you know, private implementation detail versus public oh, detail. Oh, that, that, I disagree there. Because uh, because of the okay, layering, the layer in the segmentation in the repo, it's not. Yep. It, it, this is nascent, right? It's not highly visible. 
but you, I am trying to sort out the thing where like the burn repo right now, technically speaking, is an internal only segment, the way it's built and consumed. It's not, it doesn't produce anything that's public facing. The burn, the API segment with burn in it has all of the public facing things. And for example, I moved all of the messages out of the private burn segment into the API segment because I was under the under understanding that all those should be public. And what I'm finding is that that may not have to be true, and that can change the relationship between the API, the burn, and the API segments. I want to understand all those degrees of freedoms so that when we make those changes, I, I, I have better understanding the impact across the whole system. That's what I'm trying okay. to get at. I, I'm, I'm, this is just curiosity. In this system, how does Ballutal get access to the messages? Well, today, messages in Ballutal are both public. Right. In your world where messages are private, how does Ballutal get access to the messages? Burn, the burn repo, burn segment moves ahead of the API segment and makes them available to the API. Like the API can get to the segment. I mean, it's the same way that burn gets to them now. It just it flip, it inverts the relationship. How do they get to them now? I think they reach straight across and grab them. Okay, okay. I think, Sorry. I mean, that was but that's because that they're C++ the headers. Ability. and Yeah, I mean, but that's because they're C++ headers and doing other more complicated things was a pain in the butt, which is one of the main reasons we moved back to the central repo is that moving all these silly headers around was creating a tremendous amount of pain on Sean, and it was just um, I, that I didn't realize. And C++ is bad in the NuGet systems. It just doesn't, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So all of that is kind of like the, oh, well, yeah, we just reach across and grab them. Uh, and okay. that, again, that it's a my, mental model my... I'm trying to get right. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. No, that, sorry, I was stuck on the, I was stuck on the, 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 I don't know, mechanical model sure. of how <laughs> would you share this stuff. Yeah, um, I cheated. Okay. <laughs> right, okay, so you're saying ball noodles just goes in because there's no code behind the message structs. Correct. It can just reach across and get the Correct. Headers. Okay. But but right. potentially the, the correct relationship is actually to bring those structs back to, to, into where burn is, which is the way that Sean had them originally, yeah. which makes right, a lot right. more sense given the way that he was thinking about the interface being published. And then burn, uh, sorry, ball utils NuGet package reaches over and grabs the enums that it needs. Right. And maybe that's the, the other way to, you know, skin the cat or whatever the expression is. Um, and I'm just I'm just want to make sure I understand properly so I don't make boneheaded decisions elsewhere down the line. Yeah. So, the, so the problem with doing making them private is that you're forcing everyone that writes a BA to use Volutal. Correct. That's absolutely yes. We're forcing them to use the interfaces. You're right. Just like we did no, you're, before. You're you're forcing them to use a Wix native code NuGet package instead of being able to use publicly available headers and write them in whatever they want to write in. Uh, where would you, if you were writing a BA in Delphi, how would you need Wix native code? Well, the... You'd have to duplicate the interfaces. Oh, you're missing the layer, the, the helper, the message helper layer. Yeah, you don't get access to anything. You need to be talking to Burn directly. So when yep. Burn calls yep. the entry point on your DLL that's compiled in whatever language you want to compile in, you're going to have to, it needs to be documented what what the interop is there. Right, right. And in V3, because the interfaces were calm, you had a lot more languages that you could reach. I, I don't think it changed. I'm I'm curious how it changed from V3. I mean, I I get that this is a new thing you can do in V4 that you couldn't do in V3 with the messages, but I don't think was it different in V3. Well, the V3, the com interface was the published interop, so the entry point Bur to the BADL. Oh, it was Burn talking through the com. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think we ever did that quite right, but yeah, and somehow it all just kind of worked out in the end, right? So the entry point for the BA DLL, the burn passed in the COM interface for the engine, and the BA was required to return the COM interface for the BA. Right, right. So if we don't publish the messages, then any BA 
not written in managed code or C would no longer would, would stop working, would be cut off. They would be relying on the private implementation of the message headers. They would have well, to go look at those message headers in the repo to be able to. Well, yeah, and that would be highly unsupported. And we'd be like, yeah, you shouldn't be doing that because we said that the messages were not intended to be public. Right. That it, That's all the repercussions of making the messages public. Or, I mean, private. Sorry. By making the messages private, that would be repercussions of all those things. We'd be like, yeah, don't do that. It reduces right. the, the interop. Com still has you know decent interop support across you know your right your, right. your non Microsoft Windows development languages, right. um, and of course it, there's still I have to think about it. There's still you know C compatibility, so you could that that's you know common. Um, so I don't know how you do it in Python or something like that? Well, Python Python's a bad choice because everything would have to get wrapped there. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you could do a Python BA without even a V three without some significant work. Right. Although now that I think All about right. it, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> what uh, do you think about Python? That's, and Python? Um, that's a that's a tangent. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I get that. So the messages also enable someone to write directly to them. In which case, someone would have to duplicate all the uh, message helper code. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, that, that would, I mean, we would do this because we'd be saying don't. If we made them private, we'd say don't do that. Use ball util, right? And Sean's point is, and that would prevent anybody from writing a ball util com, um, peer, right? Presumably in other languages. I don't know why you'd want to bother writing a one in C because hopefully ours is so minimal that you'll just use it. You'd have to like retype everything that's in ball util, right? That's kind of the, the space that we're talking about. But okay. that's kind of inevitable, right? Because because Burn no longer talks com, uh, no one can rely on com to do a BA. Yeah. I mean, I guess technically Don't the either. MBA core is shipping. Uh, it has a native DLL in there that has an entry point that you pass it the oh. parameters from the right. entry point, and it gives you back the com interfaces. <laughs> oh. So MBA core isn't just for managed code anymore. It's for any. It's the it's the com help. It's the it's the fake com helper. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay. That that's <laughs> that's, that's interesting. That's just an that interesting is. way of looking at it. Um, uh, I mean that. Well, that that. I mean, essentially, that solves the problem, right? Um, the problem, because it means that there is still a way you can access. Um, burn. You could you could write a non c non dot net ba the same way uh, with the same level of support that you had in v3 we didn't lose anything right. by going to messages or making the messages private right it, you just you end up having okay. to pick up this extra dll that you may not have had if you're able to interop with c c plus plus well in the past and to be clear we're saying calm but it's really fake calm like we're not doing all the everything to hook it up into the comm system, right? So things but, that can operate on our very lightweight comm work, but. I mean, yes and no, it's it kind of is real comm. Yeah, but we're not querying or we're not initializing a lot of stuff on the burn engines. In V3, we're not initializing a lot of stuff on the side to make it truly comm. We are doing our own loading of the DLLs and things like that, which has, has Having been burned by this in the past where I did fake calm, there are some things in calm that do not end up working out for you. Um, most of it will. And I just, it's one of those things that I don't remember the details of it. It's, uh, I mean, we're doing ion known level. Yeah, calm. right, exactly. There are more advanced features of it that won't work. 
but Burn doesn't use those. So, but yeah, so it it, it all ends it's up all okay. You just never see it. That also means we don't have to register. Right. <laughs> That's why we did it that way. But not being registered, not having everything registered, has the weird things like that. Okay. All right. I understand better there. So then the statement still is that we should be publishing the um, messages. The expectation is that we're still going to publish the messages um, so that anybody that wants to write below the interfaces level can. Um, why you'd want to do that in C is hopefully purely as a learning exercise because our implementation should be as narrow as you would need it to be. But um, they would still be able to do that or Delphi or pick your other language that can operate at a um, binary struct communication level. Okay. Now, to be clear, though, the messages are without that interop layer. The messages are really, really cumbersome. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I would, you know, I would not recommend avoiding the the com layer if you can. Yeah, yeah. It would have to be someone wanting to write a layer on Delphi or something like that. Well, Delphi being the only Delphi. language I can think of right now that's. Like, Delphi has good comm support. So right. Yeah. And, oh, I see. Stick with that. Oh, I see. Huh, okay. A pure Lua implementation. Yeah. You, see, the, the, you keep picking the interpreted languages, so that's problematic. I don't know where else to go. I, I can't see it in Node, <laughs> in JavaScript. So. <sighs> Rust no. or Go? Yeah. <laughs> Rust, Go, oh, yeah, okay. D, um, there's V. Uh, Zig, these are all you know, native. All right. <clears throat> Lack of a runtime. I guess I thought C could absorb the C, oh, but the interface may be really weird for them. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Sorry, I wasn't thinking Rust. Um, Rust builds very large SQLs, which is not any worse than the .NET framework does. So, but yeah. Um, so Optus, one thing I want to drill into here is there is the a lot of the goal here is to make the the ability to have the volutal which contains the interfaces to burn more separate from burn itself because burn is tied to the version of the wix tool set that you get the language and all those kinds of things because changes to burn often require changes to the language i don't know often um, may require change the language so the language delivers burn as part of its runtime execution the goal here has been that you can now pick the API that you want to talk to burn, and then you can pick your tools that you want to use for burn independently. Um, although you can't pick a burn API newer than the tools that you're using, hopefully that makes sense, but you can pick an older one, stay there, and pick up new versions of the Wix tool set with bug fixes and things like that without having to do um, any work in your BA going forward. And so the goal is to separate those. So it's not artificial, it's actually purposeful. Like we are trying to make that work, where before they were completely glued together. You got the WIS tool set, you got everything, and in doing so, you had to fix your BA at that point. Now you'll be able to get a new version of the WIS tool set, take the bug fixes there, and if everything goes right, you have to make no change to your BA. You just keep building against the same um, API that you were using in the past. So that is the goal. That's the that is the high level goal of all of this underlying stuff. All right, so I think that gets us all up to speed on the message API versus the interface API. The expectation is most people will still use the interface API as a very um, I'm going to say as a as the minimal as we can make it uh, interrupt layer to the message API, and um, at this point the message API is still public. Um, and you can use those. I meant private message structs would tie them back. Oh, private message structs. Mm. No, private message structs would not try. We can take that offline. So, and then the message API will still be available for a lot of these other um, language spaces, and we'll go from there. All right. So basically, no changes. Um, There's no action item for this discussion. 
no, not not here. Yeah, no. Now it's just a matter of going through the mental model and making sure it maps appropriately to like things that I, I have to go back and review the things that I did that were not under this understanding to make sure that they didn't do anything that was based off of my previous mental model, for example. Um, that's the actual, so that's a personal, just go through and look at all the work that was done. So, uh, good stuff, as always. We end up in a better understanding of the world. All right, moving on. We have, I'm going to say 20 minutes. Sound good? We'll end this at 11. Okay. Let's start at the top with all the four issues and start working our way down. Sounds good. Not getting anybody saying no. Ta da! So are, no, just joking. What are, the, what are the buckets that we're deciding on? What are we deciding on? Uh, does it stay in four um, is a big one. Um, there may be things in here that um, we said in three many moons ago that, well, that's a breaking change, so it can't be in three. We'll toss it in four um, without any regard as to whether we wanted to put it in V40 now that the moons have aligned with us here. Um, so that's a big one. We may just find things like, yeah, we don't want to do that anymore. Um, then and put it into well, at this point 4x or we're going to get rid of it i mean I, I i understand you want to start doing the respawn process and we should absolutely do that and that until we do that we're creating more work for us to re-review these things um but we need to have the answers to that to do that and i don't want to wait on v4 triage to go do all the respawn process so i don't think we're going to find many of those um, I mean, if we take it out of four, we have to put it into something else. Yeah, four X. That, that's the natural place it goes. Cause it doesn't go back to three X. It's still breaking. It goes forward what? into four X. I mean, if it's a breaking change, it can't be four X. We have V dot next. Oh, we do have V next now. Yep. Okay, great. That's where it goes then. Okay. Yay, thank you. V dot next. Oh, I like that. V dot next. I like that. Yes. V dot next then. Yes. That's where it needs to go then. Not 4x, it needs to go into v.next. You're right. I don't think that we're going to hit many of those, um, but we might. Um, we also could fix maybe the tagging here a bit as we're flying through them, but I don't know if that's going to be worth it. Um, mostly it's a idea of getting an idea of um, a rough idea of who's kind of looking at these things as we go forward a little bit, because um, I don't have a good feel as I look at all these, who's going to do this work? I know the things that I'm taking, but I haven't shared that with anybody else either. Um, so I think that a lot of it's going to turn into a feel for, ah, and this is what we have left before preview one goes out. Not that we have to fix all the bugs in preview one, but we should ideally fix all the bugs in preview one. It's kind of the idea. So we are going to decide if it stays in four, we need to decide whether preview one or if no. we, yeah, I'm going to be – if we push anything – I don't know what would push something to preview two right now. It would be a, oh, yeah, I guess we'll push that to preview two. Um, you know, we'll see. I don't know what that bar is going to be. But if it is, then we'll have to create a preview two place to put them. Well, are we, are we talking about um, – yeah, uh, preview one is feature complete. Or preview one is, yeah, it, it, you know the the question I'm trying to ask. I just apparently the feature complete. I think I is the thing I think you're asking for, right? And well, I mean, I'm asking. You, you said you can't imagine what would go in preview two. Well, okay, so that to me that says that everything we're going to do is quote unquote you know done, feature complete, implemented. Just it might have bugs. Yeah, uh, which basically means everything that we leave, every bug and feature request that we leave open, has to be implemented by preview one, unless we're going to say stragglers can come in after preview one. Well, I so one that's my dream is that yes, and maybe there's going to be too many in here, and I haven't hit some of them. Like oh no, we're not going to do that in preview one. Well, we're going to save that for preview two. But preview two, in my mind, is, hey, here it is, Wix 4, preview one. It has all the functionality, which preview zero did not. 
preview. Wix 4 has everything you need. You should be able to adopt it and build your entire product on it. And we're probably going to get bugs from that. And all those bugs are naturally going to be the things we fix in Preview 2. So to me, Preview 2 is for the bugs that have not been opened yet, or that are opened after Preview 1. Or <laughs> that's the thinking. And, and it could be that we're going to find bugs in here like, oh, you know, we really don't need this, but then we're saving it for Preview 2 when we know we're going to get more bugs. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm confused about, I guess this is a naming problem. Um, preview, previews are just, you know, beta releases, whatever. Yeah, sure. Want to call them. Right. We're, we're, for Wix 4, we're saying Preview 0 was this set of things. Yep. We're saying for Preview 1, it's going to be this other set of things. There are potentially other new things that could come in in a later preview. And of course, bugs, bug fixes. No, I, so I, I hope there's no new things that come in preview two. Like I don't have any vision of okay. that. No, it's preview one is done. So what you said with feature complete, and it, this is this is what we're shipping. We're good. Right? Okay. Preview two then is the bugs we get because people finally start using it. Sorry, this, this is a transition from Wix four previews uh, being defined by features that are included versus Wix four previews that are just subsequent beta releases with bug fixes. Okay, yeah. That's a that's a, you know, yeah. that's a transition. Yes. Uh, but it does mean that everything we want to do has to be done in preview 1. That's my hope. That's Unless we hit okay. something that we're like, you know what? There's enough value here to ship preview 1 with known things not done and then the things that I just said start falling apart. Right? But like that essentially coming out and saying, "Hey, here's preview 1. We're still not done." Well, I, it comes down to, are we going to delay a preview one in order to get this yes. particular thing? And, and through this and, process, I think we're going to learn what that is, right? Okay. And and I'm hoping, like, on the quick scans I've done, I'm hoping, like, large chunks of these are like, oh, MS build. Like, I'm hoping that's 50% of the things in here, which is the big bow that I've got tied up on it and I've gotten positive feedback from Visual Studio team that we're going to be able to solve all the things that I was worried about. So I'm excited to get into that and start tackling all of those issues. And then there will be some things around that. Like I know there's a lot of various burn things hanging around. And if Sean doesn't want to pick those up and you don't want to pick those up, I'm not probably picking up burn issues, which means we're probably throwing them away. Like into V4 or uh, into Vnext. See, there I go for your 4x again. Into Vnext, probably, because we're just not fixing them. We're not doing them. Right? We're not going to save them for preview two, I don't think. Okay. Okay. No, that, right. that's, that's. And then there's a block at. of patching nonsense that I know I have to go back and do. But that nonsense, it just is. functionality, whatever you want. Yeah, to I, know, I mean, I don't like it, but that doesn't mean it's not important for people and I have to go fix it. So I will go fix it. That's after the MS Build stuff. MS Build is way more important. And then there's all the little things that were like, you know, we should fix all these. But again, patching. So patching is in preview one. Yes, patching has to be in preview. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then these little things we fixing that could be preview two. We're not going to hold preview one for every known we, bug we, fix. We, we could do that. We could do that. I hope we don't. I hope. I hope we don't do that. But you're right. We might do that. Sorry. Don't do what? That we don't save things in preview two. We should just fix them. Features or bug fixes? Bug fix. Every whatever we're going to put in. This 115. <laughs> we should just we should either put it in preview one or not put it in four. That's my hope. Okay. So, uh, so uh, I, I, we're having a communication problem here. Yep. You're saying all these 115 are either moved to v next v v four dot x or preview one. Yeah, that's my dream. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Now I know what you're looking for. Okay. So are we going to add a label preview one to all these or I a project? The project. I the project. project. Okay. No, I, I, again, I hope we don't have to. If we have to add a label because we decide that my dream is going to be a failure and uh, we would add a, a preview two label, I think, or a preview two project and throw them there or something or milestone. But we had a project before, right? We have, I just added a preview one project. 
Fantastic. So we could add a, I don't want to tempt fate, but we could add a preview to project to put them in that. Okay. No, let's not. Okay. Great. We, we have, we have a, we have a model. Yep. It's, it. it's going, it, it could be closed. Preview one or X. The next. Yep. Those are options. It's great. Cool. Awesome. So this first one's Jacob. This should be preview one. I know he's close. We just got to let that roll. Um, I'm hoping a lot of these go quick because it's like a lot of them are going to be this. It's MS build. Yes, I know. Need to do that. These incremental build things I'm actually hoping is already fixed, but I have not verified it. So I need to go do that. So one, two, three are fixed. Wait. Oh, gosh. I was like, I expected this to be the number, but the number's down here. Well, that was, sorry. Optical illusion. Um, so oh, all these are in collapse duplicate directories that needs to stay to me that's in preview one these next three are i need to hold on hold on hold on i I'm think go we're going way too fast i'm trying to fly through this i yes. understand but you also want me to do stuff with the I do. right yes i do thank you okay then um the the three ms build bugs yes those are preview one and you're leaving them open because they're going to be fixed well, aren't these already fixed? I don't know that they're fixed. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So this is to fix or to verify? Correct. Okay, fine. To write the unit test for, I want to be really, you know, solid on it. Um, Great. These next three features are open because I want to make sure that the the whips go back and are updated because I know all three of them are now out of date. And I haven't decided how I'm going to store the history of them. It's like, here's what we were thinking we we're going to do and here's what we did, but I want to do that. Um, so that's the Again, next this is just three. Verification. I, or, yeah, or verification and updating to make it. Updating the, you want to update the whips. Great. Right. Yes, because I don't want them sitting out there with the old information. But the old information is interesting because it informed how we got to where we're at now. Sure. I, don't, I need a little green light from Bob when I can continue. Sorry, where are you at? You're looking at, you're about to look at that one. Four, four, three, four. Go ahead. Go All ahead. right, you know what? I'm going to start saying the numbers. Four, four, three, four. That might help. Four, no. four, three, four is a patch issue. Need to go verify that it is or is not fixed. All right. Four, five, three, six is a MS build issue. Needs to be addressed. Four, five, six, seven. I do agree with, and it should be fixed in MS Build. Um, can you go yep. back? If you say numbers, I'll do them too. Four, five, three, six. Yes. Currently assigned to Fire, Fire Giant. Giant. Yeah, you can give that to me. I'll be the proxy because I think our the place where all the emails are going for that is not helpful. So I'm doing the MS Build work now. It's been assigned. So I'll take them. Okay. I guess part of this experience is we're going to give things assigned to people too. That's probably a good thing too. Yeah. That is definitely a good thing. Yep. All right. So target extension should be in preview. Four, five, six, seven. Definitely preview yep. one. Four, five, seven, nine done or almost done probably the only question i had on that was whether we need to make any language like does it make sense to have an x86 msi in an x64 bundle uh, hmm. yes because wow <laughs> yeah, i understand that's like, you're like why did you bother building a 64 bit bundle if you're depending on wow but yeah, I mean, if that's the answer, then yeah, I mean, it's probably done. We shouldn't block it, so I, I, we shouldn't block it. At at most, it's a warning. At least it's nothing, and in between is a message, and we don't have any of those kind of messages anyway. So yeah, I I, I don't I can't imagine given given that like ARM sixty four 
supports x86 and to be x64 yeah i don't i don't i don't know what we'd add yep all right closed implemented i, I think it's implemented right I guess so. I mean, you guys did the work. <laughs> I claim no credit on that one. All props go to Bob and Sean. <laughs> Does that come with money or? Oh, no, just props. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Torch. This is a pyro. So 4602 is a, 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 a patching thing. I was saying pyro, but it's a patching thing. Um, that's not in Torch anymore, but it could be somewhere else. So you need to go look at that. 4607, and you can see that if it's me, 4607, you can give that, that's MS build, you can give that to me. And yeah, yeah, that issue. Um, burn API documentation. Sean? Yeah, we'll see. Now that, is the documentation repo, have we finished how that's going to work? Um, it's, you can write documentation in there, um, and if it doesn't stay exactly in, yes, let's talk about it. And if it moves, we're going to move anything that you put there. So it's a fine place to put code now. And if it moves, then we will do that. And, and it's not the doc repo, it's actually the web repo, but I, we can explain that why later. So this can start anytime you want. Let me know when you want to start it. I mean, the original plan was to run Sandcastle on MBA Core oh. and include that as part of the documentation. That was the original plan. So okay. I Sandcastle is fascinating. All right. I, and it does prompt that we do not have DTF documentation. So basically, I'm going to wait for us to solve the DTF con documentation, and then I'll... <laughs> that, that's not a bad idea. And that's not a bad idea. This means that this is going to be one of the later things that gets solved, unfortunately. But given the the weight of the other features, just like in Preview Zero, so Does I'm going mean... through an updating documentation every Wednesday, except not this last one. While my daughter's in gymnastics, I'm typing documentation. So there's that. Um, NuGet package generated by Wix should have version in the file name by default. I, is this? I don't know if this is relevant anymore. Yeah, this was back when FireGiant added to be able to ability to create a NuGet package. Yeah, I'd like to and that's bring that back. Dropped out that's, of yeah, that's not enforced. So this is this is a, I think that's dead. Should close it. Yeah, it, it's Sean agreed. He opened the issue. So yeah. there we go. Uh, should burn burn should support semantic versioning. Um, lots of work was done around here around allowing any versions. Is this done? I think we should give no, this to Sean. No, this is compilers. Compilers. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. So we can remove. I don't know about change tags. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, Bob, if you don't want it, it's coming to me. I'll let you decide. And it goes in preview one. Sorry. What? <laughs> Four six six six. Yes. If you don't want it, assign it to me. It goes in preview. I don't one. want it. Then that's the answer. No, Wix. I said, if I don't want it, I'm sorry, I'm missing something. What do you want? Are you asking me to do something here? I'm asking if, if uh, semantic versioning should be supported. I think that's the answer. Should be supported by burn. It is supported by the engine. It's not supported in the compiler tools. There are still places probably where it's expecting versions and stuff like that. But... Oh, I hate, some, I hate some ver, So yeah, then Go give ahead. it to me next. Okay. Wixel files should be able to include other Wixel files. Not it. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember if this is implemented already, because I'm pretty sure I run it through the preprocessor now. At least I thought about it. But I'm not really big on include files. <laughs> to say the least. Um, I will take it, and I will verify. Okay. If it's not supported, I would punt it. Punt it or kill it? Punt it. I think it's a good feature, but okay. there are many good features in the world. Yeah, okay. So that, that's a 4X or something that can get itself in the respawn. Okay. Got it. 
Um, incorrect behavior immediate template when you're creating multi-volume installations. This may be true. That's a bug. So 4674 goes in preview one. It may be fixed. It may not be. PDBs and source should be published on a source server. Um, let's leave this in preview one because I think we need to sort out our symbols, but I don't think it's going to be published on a source server given that all the public ones are dead. Um, or other, anyway, but we should... This is a good thing to prompt on what do we do with the PDBs at the end, because what we did in preview zero is not done. Um, so 4683 goes in preview one. That's fine. This build process, I'll take it. Make SFC could not find part of the path port from V3. I, I may have already done that. Uh, leave this assigned to me in preview one. I'm, I think I already did that one, but I don't remember. So I'll go valid. So I, I did it. XC package should support repair condition. Um, this goes to Sean or Bob, because there's something about discussing what we're doing with this, right? Uh, it it sounded it like that was not dead. something we were interested in doing. Right, so right. just dead. Goes to Bob or Sean Wait. to finish. What does what is that what does it mean finish? Make it close it, complete it, send it to evaluate this issue and make it go to the appropriate place. Sorry, that's not very helpful. Is there work here? Not what did we good. decide to do? We, I thought I thought this was there was still logic here. I mean, we we rejected Fire Giant's implementation, so it's not implemented at all. No. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. The repair condition. Repair command. The repair condition. So just like there's an install condition, there was a repair condition. It's a very... Okay, sorry. I don't remember this whatsoever. I will take this and go try to figure out what the hell it was supposed to be. I mean, we had a really long discussion on it. Yep. Yeah. Go back and but... watch it. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you really don't like listening to your own voice. Nope. Not even I mean... at 1.75 speed. So Jacob, we already removed the repair. If you don't give repair arguments to an exe package, then it won't repair. And we removed the exe, the repair arguments in v4. So repairing.net will not happen during your package unless you manually created your own package to do that. Yeah, that was that was a bad, bad choice back yeah. then. That was one of the late things in previous year that got in right. Um, so, yeah. No. <laughs> it, no, the language I mean, side of it. Uh, maybe I'm just thinking the compiler side of it. I mean, it, it was one of the later ones, yeah. but it wasn't once you started doing the mono repo stuff. It was before. Yeah, that. it was just before that, I think. Anyway, is this gone then? I, I, I... It, it's not in four, I would say. I mean, it's I it's additive. Give it to Bob, and if he agrees, then it's gone. And if not, he can come back and defend it. At, at this point, I'm going to kill the thing because I am so terribly confused, <laughs> and therefore this is not an important thing. I suppose I will pretend that I've researched it before I do this. All right. Um, this uh, I'm trying to get to the bottom of the page today. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, Um, spam again. All right. Um, blah, blah, blah. 4726. I think he's working on this. He has a pull request open. He has two or three pull requests open. I've kind of lost track of where it's at. Um, so that's all good. 4726 is in preview one and it's assigned to somebody. Yay. Investigate Harding IS custom actions for malformed IS config. Not it? Yeah. No, I don't. No. <laughs> It can go in 4x, or we can kill it now. I, yeah, this is not terrifically actionable. No. I say we kill it. Cool. Bob? 
Um, yeah. Do we want to? Uh, is this a respawn? Yeah. So this is the. Do we have that process in place? And we can just suspend it if you want. Yep. Um, yeah. Let's do that for now. Okay. Uh, this is the mark triage, or maybe I didn't. Re I didn't refresh. That's it. Uh, Preprocessor always true regardless of the value of a. We just talked about that. Yes, I know. I, it's not assigned to anybody. It's the only problem. Can we give it to Ron? <laughs> it's a, it actually be a pretty good bug. I think he could. No, he he already tried to implement what they're asking. Oh. Yeah, and... that's what I. I oh, I didn't know that. I saw that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that's dude. That's what the discussion. Oh. It's probably on my list of things I gave him too. Just as I was going through. Oh. <laughs> then I don't feel any guilt whatsoever because it's all your fault. Yeah, it's all my fault, probably. Usually it's oh. um All right. Well change your mind if you want. No, no. I, it's still the right thing to do. So uh, um so yeah, uh, I guess assign it to me, and then I'll talk to him, because it's all my fault. I'll end up being the one to fix it. I don't remember you pointing this out, but... Oh, you don't? I gave a list of a whole bunch of numbers and said, hey, these are hard, and oh. these are not as hard, and you might take a look at these, and then... But I just was going through things that weren't clearly I impossible, <laughs> or needed, <laughs> or, you know, needed, like, like MS Build. I wasn't going to give MS Build stuff, because that was Right, just... right, right. So I went through basically anything that wasn't that, I ended up with six or seven. So anyway, give this to me, and then he and I can sort that out from there. All right. Um, so is IO exception when building multi-proc? Oh, he did something here. Yeah, there's an actual PR. OK. Too big for I tried in some sort of tries. I found the need to retry too many different spots. Uh, I've tried to make this centralized better. No, I haven't got it everywhere yet. So this is essentially I.O. exceptions. Um, I'll take another run at this in preview one, if unless, Bob, you want to do it. But I, I, central, I tried to centralize a lot of them in our access files code, um, or in our copy files anyway. Probably not enough in the, I just want to read this file kind of thing. Well, I'm curious. I'm curious how many of these problems still exist with, you know, better oh, intermediate cool. intermediate directory support. That's true. Um, a lot of that should have just gone away. That's true. Unless you're doing uh, the same project at the same time, which shame on you. Uh, uh, well, yeah, there there are. Yeah. The, there are still I, <laughs> retries are required for for handling you know egregious antivirus behavior. Yeah. Um, but but so, in our own but a lot of them were because we were using temp. If we're not using temp anymore, then. Oh uh, yeah, that's fair. They sh that's you fair. should be able to tell the antivirus. Yeah, ignore my build folder. I'm going to be modifying files a lot in there. It'll speed right. the build process too. Now that said, it still is probably not a bad idea if we do that. Yeah. Ha, you know, support retries. Right. Um, yeah, I'll I'll keep it assigned to me, and I will take a look and see if we have All right. some glaring holes there. So that's page one down. One, two, three, four. In about fifteen-ish minutes, maybe ten minutes. We started a little bit late. <laughs> No was, discussion about no. what preview one is. Oh, that's fair. Okay. Um, that's nice. Half an hour. And so one, two, three, four. So I have hope that we'll, if they keep going like this, and these are the old ones, which can sometimes be the trickier ones, um, that we'll be able to blast through these next few. So um, I would like to propose that, and this mostly impacts Sean, that we try to blast through these before we hop back on the design discussions for a little bit. Um, to make sure that we got all the issues sorted out. Anybody disagree with that? Or at least get through like two or three more pages and then before we jump on another design discussion? 
Well, the the two design discussions are kind of a triage as well. Oh, okay. so so we're gonna find them as an issue in here somewhere. They're just gonna be a longer discussion. Okay. Fair enough. Then maybe we'll just pick them up when we pick them up. Then. Well, they don't they don't have issues. Oh. Okay. All right. Um, let's do let's do one each each week. It, yeah. Okay. All right, we'll do it like That's we did today then. We'll do triage of the new issues, we'll go back and do our design discussion, and then we'll mop up yep. the four issues. Yeah, I think that's good. All right. I hope the next two issues are simpler than the one we did just now. Or at least well, our less we learning on my our, our, We establish our, our baseline for preview one. So yeah, that helps too. Yep. So I hope the rest of them go like this. Um, I would. I would wish that a lot of them would just go away, but I don't have any hope that that's actually the truth. So, we got rid of three out of 115, and that was just in one page. So, two and a half percent? Not bad. <laughs> okay. Other things people want to talk about. Uh, Jacob, you've been rolling with us here. Up to ghosts. Anything else that's going on out there? People, Questions people have, things they want to know about? Um, are there such things? No. All right. Well, we'll let that roll. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. So that will be uh, the 24th. So the 24th, we'll be back and we will do essentially this meeting all over again with different content, but the same thing. Triage of new issues, design discussion, and then triage of old issues, laying out what exactly is in preview one. Um, and then there's just work to be done, which is uh, all good. Oh, excellent. All right. So two weeks from now, we'll be back. Until then, all of you have a good time. Later. Bye. Bye.